Hey guys and welcome to my channel. In today's video we are going to be doing a really gross clean of a few areas in my house that have just been neglected. There's definitely a ton of cleaning motivation packed in this video so make sure to stick around. I'm also going to be showing you guys the perfect fall cookie recipe towards the end of the video so definitely check that out. They turned out amazing and it's definitely a great easy dessert that you could bring to any get together this season. But without further ado, let's get started on today's video. So the first thing I'm doing is getting started on the kitchen. We had a few things laying around, so I just wanted to get all of that put up before starting on my deep cleaning. And with all of my cleaning, I try to start from top to bottom. That way no dust or anything falls onto areas I've already cleaned. So I'm just going to start at the very top, which is the top of the fridge. It had been a minute since the space got a really good clean and it definitely shows. I first started by just using regular multi-surface spray but the dust was pretty thick and it just wasn't cutting it so I did go in with some Craig Cutter degreaser which you'll see me use throughout this whole kitchen and it got the dust up so easily and it was great to know that the space is cleaned. And since I was on the fridge anyways, I just went ahead and gave the front a really good wipe down. Again, just using the crud cutter to get the really stuck on stuff. But it did leave some streaks, so I just went behind with a microfiber cloth just to make sure that all the streaks were gone. I don't use this product very often around my house. It does have some strong chemicals, and I just prefer to use something a little bit more natural, like my Every Spring Multi-Surface Cleaner. But this is a super heavy degreaser, so I will use it sometimes in area that food or grease really get caked on, and it just helps so much. I first found this product when I went to paint our cabinets, and I do highly recommend it. It took any dirt or grime right off and made a super clean surface to paint. But just to be careful, I wouldn't use it on your cabinets just to clean them because it could very well take that finish off your cabinets. So just be extra careful if you do use it. And now I'm moving on to the microwave. We don't use our microwave very often, so it stays pretty clean. But since I was cleaning everything anyways, I just wanted to quickly wipe this out as well and then make sure it was all clean. I saw you from across the room. And then moving down below the microwave to the range, this is a space that I love using the crud cutter on. You can't see it in the video, but in person the grease was literally just dripping off even just a few seconds after I sprayed the area. And I literally just had to go through and lightly wipe down the rest. And by the way, this video is not sponsored. I just wanted to share the products that I really use and I really do love. In all my videos, I link below the products I use in each video. So if you're ever wanting to try anything I use out, you can definitely check below for all of that information. And next I'm cleaning this window here in the kitchen. The window itself wasn't too bad, but the edges definitely had some like little bugs that had piled up. And at the end of this clip, I'll show you the paper towels I used. They were absolutely disgusting. I know a lot of times on camera it's hard for y'all to see what I see so I just want to show y'all exactly what I'm seeing. This is real life. Sometimes spaces get dirty and forgotten about and nobody really has the time to deep clean their house every week. But continuing down, I'm just wiping down our backsplash. We had some barbecue chicken splatter all around our kitchen which you will see on the bottom cabinets later but I really needed to get the backsplash cleaned too. Here's a little close-up of some of the mess that was on it. For our backsplash, I just used some vinyl floor towels and pretty much just cut them to size and put them up. There really wasn't much to it. The backs had some sticky material, but to hold even better, I did put like a few lines of Gorilla Glue. But I did this project myself within a few hours, so it was super quick and easy. And since this isn't our forever home, I honestly didn't want to put too much time or energy into this project. But if you wanted to make these a little bit more permanent, you can always get a special grout that is used for vinyl tiles. And I'm sure that would make it look even better and probably last a really long time. I put them up about a year and a half ago and so far they've held up excellent. 
There's maybe like a tile or two behind the oven that have started to pull up a little bit. But I think I can just put some more glue on it and that problem will be fixed. But they are so easy to clean. For the food that had gotten on them, I just used my normal spray on it and seriously just wiped it up with a rag. I've never had to scrub them to get clean. It's always been so easy. And now for the stovetop, I'm using the Krug Cutter first, just in case we have anything on there that's like harder to get off, but I'm just gonna follow it up with my regular spray. Like I said, the Krug Cutter, I feel like just has some pretty harsh chemicals. And since this is where our food is going, I didn't want that to be the last thing that was on our stove. And I'm also wiping down the inside of our oven. I've gotten into a pretty good routine of cleaning the oven like every month or so. So it's really not getting too bad and it definitely makes it so easy to clean whenever I do clean it because I know food hasn't been sitting on there for too long. But I'm just gonna go ahead, use the degreaser to clean the door and the walls of the inside. But since the smell is kind of strong, I wanted to let the oven air out. That way, if those chemical smells were in there, they wouldn't be trapped. So I just left the door open for a little bit while I wiped down the base cabinets and then the rest of the countertops. And here I just wanted to show y'all again exactly what I'm seeing while cleaning. This is where that chicken splattered all over our cabinet so I wanted to wipe that down and get them all clean. Once I've got the dishes put up, I wanted to clean our dishwasher. The bottom and the door were pretty dirty. I told my husband I don't think I've ever cleaned the inside of our dishwasher. That's just not really an area that I think about cleaning. You know, it cleans your dishes and always has like soap and water in it, so I guess I just don't even think about it actually getting dirty.
But now that I'm done with that, I'm just going to quickly get the stuff in the sink washed. I had a few cups in there that needed to go in the dishwasher and then all the stuff I had been adding while cleaning like the silverware holder and the microwave plate and stuff. So once I've got those washed, I'll just dry them and get them put back up to where they need to go. vacuum up the floors in here just to finish the cleaning in this space. I do have a few more areas that I'm going to go through and actually clean out before I'm fully done in here. For the most part, all of our cabinets and drawers in here are really organized and clean, but everyone has those few spaces that maybe aren't in the tip-top shape, and I'm no exception. For someone who prides themselves on organization, this is definitely embarrassing to show. But like I said, real life here, and the first place I'm going to tackle is our junk drawer. If there's something that doesn't really have a place, it just gets shoved in here and forgotten about. So I'm just going to pull out the drawer and just take everything out, start with a blank slate, and see what few things need to go back. And here I'm back with it a little bit more organized. I would love if we could keep it this neat, but I'm realistic, and I know in about a month it's probably going to need to be gone through again. And next is under the sink. It's bad under here. Stuff is just piled up. Things that don't even need to be down here or down here or like old empty bottles. To be honest with you guys, I have never cleaned out this space like ever. Since we moved in, things have gone in but not come out. And honestly, this space has always scared me. It's dark, it's kind of gross, and I've always felt if I, like, moved something around, a spider would get me. But this time, like, I knew I needed just to get in there and clean it out, organize it. So I'm just going to start by pulling absolutely everything out. I'm going in by spraying the cud crutter to loosen anything up that is stuck on, and then I'm using an extra toilet brush to really get all the grime up to clean the edges and so I could like limit the amount of time my hands had to be down there. And then I just wiped all of that out with a paper towel. There were some stains I couldn't get up and that's fine. I may go get some cabinet liner to go under here, but for now I'm just letting it be. I had some extra clear containers from when I organized the fridge a few weeks ago, so I'm just going to use those down here to organize the few things I wanted to go back. It's we'll be you to and me and still see the things all under the uh, Not decorated at all, but it yeah, is kind of organized. You always so only you have some extra, like cleaners and some soaps, trash bags, find a way to uh, make more soap, and just other things under it. And then yeah. like vegetable oil and vinegar back you there. Can show and then I have some extra wall towels. And now that the kitchen was completely finished, I wanted to share this super delicious fall cookie recipe with y'all. It's a pumpkin snickerdoodle cookie, which is my absolute favorite thing. So I thought y'all could try it out too. I'm just showing you the ingredients. I've got some butter melted and cooling here. I've got my eggs, some lemon juice, some sugar, flour, some brown sugar. I've got a can of pumpkin right here. And then I've got some salt, some cinnamon, and then some pumpkin pie spice, if the camera will focus. <laughs> uh, there we go. And then some baking soda back here, and then some vanilla. 
So the first thing I'm doing is putting half a cup of butter melted into this bowl and I did let that cool all the way before using it and then I'm mixing in half a cup of sugar and a third of a cup of brown sugar and then get that all mixed together and once that's mixed I'm just gonna add in a fourth of a cup of this pumpkin And I'll get that all mixed in and then add in one egg yolk. So just separating the egg whites from the yolk and putting the yolk in there. And then three fourths of a teaspoon of vanilla extract. The original recipe called for a fourth teaspoon of cream of tartar and then put that in your dry ingredients. But I didn't have that so I'm just gonna go ahead and substitute with half a teaspoon of lemon juice. And then I'm going to set that bowl to the side and do the dry ingredients. So I'm going to start with one and a half cups of flour and then add in one and a half teaspoons of the pumpkin pie spice, half a teaspoon of the baking soda, and then half a teaspoon of salt. And once I've got those mixed, I'm going to slowly add those into the other bowls, just mixing it in as I go. And then in a minute, I'll just finally cover it with some plastic wrap and put that in the fridge to firm up for at least 45 minutes. I did find this recipe on Pinterest. I didn't come up with it on my own, so I'll be sure to link the original recipe down below if you want to check that out and see it all written out. But I'm just about to move on to the next thing. And here is the living room, which I'm going to work on next definitely needs a little bit of tidying up i need to clean back behind that couch back behind the entertainment center and also go through the entertainment center and then i really need to clean all of these windows if i can get to that so i'm just gonna start by getting all of the mess cleaned up everything back in order I was at the wrong place at the right time Cause suddenly there you were with those bright blue eyes We were conversing under the night sky When you took my hand said let's leave now Don't wanna be shy I will let my guard down Don't wanna be shy just gonna vacuum up in here every few weeks I like to do what I call a slow vacuum and it's exactly what it sounds like I'm just gonna vacuum it extremely slow so this is the actual speed I'm going at it's not slowed down for effect I like to run the vacuum over the same area over and over again at a super slow pace until I can't hear anything coming out of the rug anymore I have found this gets up so much stuff out of the rugs and carpet that otherwise might have just stayed with a normal quick vacuum. It's definitely time consuming but I promise it's worth it. But I'm just going to go ahead and do that all around in here until I'm done with the whole rug. just pulling out the couch and I'm gonna clean behind there I cleaned behind the other couch about a week or so ago so I didn't feel like I needed to do that today And 
And next, I'm just gonna clean this entertainment center. It needed to be wiped down on the top, get the behind it cleaned pretty good. We recently ran some wires through the wall, so I needed to vacuum up that mess. But I also needed just to go through the inside and clean those shelves and dust off everything that was inside. My son had pulled all the movies out one day and I couldn't be bothered to fix them then. So I'm just going to go ahead, take the time today to put them back in there how they were. Mistakes on us, but do they really don't us? Your tongue can be sharp, cut me close to the heart. But we can master the art, and the thing is that these scars are scary, but they are just small scars. We should never be afraid of them. You and I know. And last in here, I just want to get these windows clean. So I went through making sure to get all the cracks and crevices just to really make sure that they're clean. And I went ahead and dusted off the blinds in here just to really finish it off. So once I finished that, I took a little break, ate some dinner, and at this point the cookie batter had been sitting in the fridge for a little bit. So I thought it would be a good time to go ahead and get those put in the oven. So I just preheated it to 350 and while that was heating, I'm making my cinnamon sugar mixture, putting a fourth of a cup of sugar and two teaspoons of cinnamon in a bowl. And getting my pan ready, I didn't have any parchment paper to lay down. So instead, I'm using a trick I learned when I worked at a bakery just to make sure your cookies don't stick. And that is just by spraying it with some non-stick spray and then lightly coating that with some flour. It doesn't have to be caked in it, just enough that it's creating a small barrier above the pan. It's so simple, but yet it works so good. And then I'm just scooping little balls of the cookie out, rolling those between my hands to make sure they're smooth and then coating those in that cinnamon sugar mixture. I got about 12 cookies on my pan and I did have a little bit more batter that I probably could have gotten about like four or so more cookies out of it, just in case you're wondering about like the serving amount. And then I'm just popping those in the oven for 10 minutes. They probably could have been in there another minute, but I didn't want to overdo them and I like my cookies a little bit softer anyways. And so while those were cooking, I'm going to pick up the rest of the main part of our house. And by the time I was finishing that, the cookies were ready to come out of the oven. And here's how they turned out. They turned out so good, so delicious. I feel like they really were the perfect fall cookie. 
but I'm just going to finish up for the night by vacuuming the entryway and dining room. I didn't get everything on my list done today that I wanted to, but I may pick back up here in the next few days and honestly, I'll probably think of a few more things to add to the list before then. But I feel like it was such a productive day cleaning spaces that don't always get the attention they deserve. But I hope this video is motivating for you and encourages you to get a few things done today. And to remember that none of us are perfect and all you can do is try your best and do one thing at a time. Again, just thank you so much for watching and if you like this video, make sure to stick around and watch some of my other videos for even more cleaning motivation. And I will see you guys next week. Bye!